Hello, thank you for stopping by. My name is Becky and this is Bex Reads and today I am here with some slow burn romance recommendations for you. So I wanted to do this slow burn romance recommendation collab with my fellow booktubers who I've never collabed with before. And that's saying a lot because I've collabed with a lot of people. But I found some lovely ladies who I have not collabed with at all, which is a crying shame. We're gonna have to remedy that and do more collabs in the future. Sometimes I get it in my head that some people wouldn't want to collab with me and so it takes me longer to reach out to them. I don't know why because like very few people have ever said no. But eventually I get over that and I'm just like, eh, if they say no, they say no. So thank you ladies for wanting to do this slow burn recommendation collab with me. Let me introduce to you who the first timers are with me. We have Baron, Christy, Diana, Carrie, Keisha, and Maggie. I will have all of their channels tagged down below as well as a playlist where you can find all of our recommendations in one easy spot. But let's get into the recommendations I have to share with you for slow burn romance recs. Now, slow burn is subjective. Some people consider slow burn if they don't get together romantically until like 80% of the book, until the last chapter of the book. For me, I'm a little bit more liberal with my slow burn. I consider slow burn anything that it takes up to past 50% of the book for the couple to engage in any sort of romantic or smutty situation. That That's what a slow burn is to me. My first recommendation is going to be at Twisted Games by Anna Wong. Now I think there are other books in this series that could be considered a slow burn. However, this is my favorite one of them. So this is the one I'm going to highlight. This is about Reese and Bridget. Bridget is a princess and Reese is her bodyguard and they have tension let me tell you they got the sexual tension and while she's attracted to him and sort of wants him to act on their attraction he doesn't because he is her employer however a moment comes in this story where she pretty much pushes him past his edge and he's like fuck it you're now mine but that takes well past 50 percent like i was reading this book and i'm like when is it going to happen already and boy did this pay off because while it's slow burn past the 50 percent mark once they get to it, they really get to it. <laughs> and Reese is just a protective, dirty talking guy and I love him. And I really love Bridget's character as well. Favorite of the series, check it out. Next up is Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver. Now, if you've heard about this book, you might be thinking, Becky, is this really a slow burn? Let, let me tell you why I consider this a slow burn, okay? It spans months. <laughs> like at least four months of nothing happening in their relationship, okay? And if that isn't slow burn, I don't know what is. But this is about Sloan and Rowan, who are serial killers who know about each other's work, but haven't met each other until they do in a very gross situation. And they end up developing this friendship and they agree to participate in this game where an outside party will find another serial killer for them to go and kill and whoever kills it first gets like a point. It's like a game. To it's like a game to them and through these months of playing these games their friendship develops and while they are attracted to each other they do not act on that attraction for quite a few months <laughs> and it's so damn tense you could cut the sexual tension with a freaking spoon let me tell you but eventually it gets there and much like twisted games once it gets there it gets there full force let me tell you it doesn't once it gets there it's no longer slow burn baby it's like gas to fire it gets there it is worth the hype i think everybody should check it out just know that it's a smutty smutty book and if you don't like smutty smutty books, you're not gonna like this. It's also very gruesome in a very hilarious way. <laughs> Next up, I'm going to recommend Heart of the Fae and Veins of Magic by Emma Hamm. This is the first duology in her Otherworld series, which we follow Eamon and Sorsha. So this is slow burn. I want to say well past 50. I want to say like maybe 70% of this book. We are following Sorsha as she travels to this mysterious island that only appears every so many years to try and bring Eamon back to certain people to get a cure for a plague to help her family. And when she gets there, she's just met by this really gruff guy who has gems and geodes growing out of his body. Very Beauty and the Beast-esque. Um, but 
they don't really act on their attraction for one another for quite a long time. And unlike the other ones, when they do actually act on that, it, it doesn't really get much smuttier than that. It's a very low steam romance. And then in their second book, it takes them a while to get back to one another because they end up being separated. Um, so this very, very slow burn in my opinion, but well worth it. The chemistry was there. The tension was there. The story was there. My next recommendation is the Serpent's Touch duet by Marina Simcoe. This is a fantasy romance. And this is slow burn in the sense that there's no real smut scene until the second book. <laughs> in this, we follow Kellen, who is a Gorgon Fey, and Amira, who is a human who has been very abused, and she is living in this menagerie of otherworld beings. And when Kellen is brought into this menagerie as sort of a freak show exhibit, she ends up befriending him and finds a way to help him escape to go back to his Fey realm. Their friendship develops along the way. They get to know each other. However, she cannot look at him because if she does, he will turn her to stone and she will die. So you can imagine the time it takes for them to find a solution to this. Now, there is an exploration scene in there, but their romantic and sexual relationship really kicks in in the second book. This is also slow burn in uh, Amira's character development because in the first book, she does seem like a very naive, very like passive character. I've heard that's a complaint of people who don't like this series is they're like, she's not a very badass character. She's kind of dull, but she's dealing with a lot of abuse. And so to see her character growth in the second book to what she ends up is amazing. So slow burn in multiple avenues and one of my favorite fantasy romance. My next slow burn recommendation is I Married a Naga by Regine Abel. Now this is a very short book, so the 50% mark isn't that long. <laughs> but you know what? It took about well past 50% for these two to actually acknowledge their feelings for one another and act on that attraction. So I'm counting it and you can't tell me otherwise. So in this, we are following Serena and Zero. Serena is a human who is like a bounty hunter. She hunts like the parasite population. She keeps them in check. And Zero is a snake man, Naga of this planet. And she is told not to cross a certain border, but when she does, um, it's either die or enter into an arranged marriage with Zero here. And so they do that. But she only has to be in this arranged marriage for six months and then she can get out of there. But Zero is all in from the beginning. He is determined to make her fall in love with him. This man is so damn swoony. I swear I've never been attracted to snakes until him. But the way he goes about wooing this woman, the attention he gives her, oh my god, it's so great. <laughs> and while the romance itself isn't really slow burn, because like he's, he's right away, he's like, I'm gonna woo her and woo her hard. Her acceptance of their relationship and again, their sexual relationship it takes about 50, well into like, I want to say even 60% of this book to get there. But when it gets there, oh, it was so good. It was so worth the wait. And I cannot recommend it enough. The next books I have for Slow Burn are the Inkwater series. The first two, I haven't read the third one yet, but I'm sure it'll fall in line. But these are another fantasy romance series. This first one is The Inkwater Witch. The second one is The Wolf King. In the first book, The Inkwater Witch, we are following Mardella and Rorik. Mardella is an inkwater witch. She lives in this enchanted swamp. And Rorik is a ice fae who ends up capturing Mardella and forcing her to break this curse that is infecting his people. The only problem is she's not the one controlling this curse, but he doesn't believe her. So they are journeying through this enchanted swamp to try and reach a very specific place where she is supposed to do this ritual to break a curse. Meanwhile, she's telling him, you know, I can't control it, but he doesn't believe her. It's very much like hate to love. It does take a while, well past 50% for them to actually acknowledge they have feelings for one another and for them to realize that they just might be faded mates. I liked this. It did have a few editing errors, but I didn't care because I liked the story. I liked the character's chemistry and I thought it was a very unique fantasy romance. 
And then in book two, we follow Lowen and Crystalline. Lowen is a wolf shifter and Crystalline, again, is an ice fae. They end up in an arranged marriage to sort of act as an alliance between the wolves and the fae. And Crystalline is forced into this arranged marriage to spy on Lowen so that she can report back to her father, who is up to some shady shit, whether or not the wolves will be a strong alliance for the fae or not. And they start out in this very tenuous relationship where they want absolutely nothing to do with one another. They're not attracted to one another. They don't even really want to be near each other. But throughout the book, well past 50%, um, they end up falling in love with one another. And I loved this book. It is my favorite so far in the series. I liked the chemistry. I liked the characters' names. I liked the magic. I liked the setting. I liked so much about this book. And it is still living rent-free in my head all these months later. <laughs> so definitely one series that I recommend that I hear no one talking my about. My next recommendation is another fantasy romance, although more fantasy than romance, and that is The Hanging City by Charlie and Holmberg. This is a troll fantasy romance. We follow Lark and Asmar. Lark is a human who is running away from her abusive father. They live sort of in like this dystopian-esque world where not a lot of humans are left. So she ends up seeking refuge in the troll kingdom, and they really don't want her there. But she has this ability to bring forth fear from creatures, and so they have this problem in their underbridge kingdom, in the chasm. There are monsters that threaten their city. So they agree to take her in if she will use her ability to uh, keep away the monsters that are plaguing their town. But she's seen as like a very low of low class citizen because she is one of few humans in this. And she ends up taking refuge with this troll brother and sister. She lives in their room with them. They're sort of roommates or whatnot. And she ends up forming a friendship with Asmar, who is the troll, and they form a friendship and then a very beautiful romance. This is slow burn in the sense that it takes like 70-80% to get to the romance in this. And when it gets there, it's again a very um, closed door, low spice romance. But I loved these characters. I loved the originality of this. This is a three Billy Goats gruff retelling. I've never read that ever, 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 ever. Um, I loved the uh, city underneath the bridge. I loved the friends to lovers. I will say this doesn't have like the strongest plot and the world building isn't the best. But I completely overlooked that because I liked the characters and I liked their relationship a lot. So keep that in mind. But hey, if you're looking for a low spice low stakes, low fantasy. Why do I like these low stakes, low fantasies? I don't know, but I do, but I highly recommend it. That's the point. My next slow burn recommendation is actually a historical contemporary romance. So not a fantasy, hey. It is Hidden in the Mist by Christina Courtney. So this is a dual timeline romance. We are following Skye and Rafe in one century and then two other characters who I honestly forgot their names. I'm sorry, but they are in like the Viking era. And Skye is struggling to keep her isolated um, off-grid farm in a Scottish village afloat until Rafe shows up and he is trying to just find peace with his life. He was wrongly convicted of a crime and imprisoned so he just got released and he's just he's just trying to find a place where he can settle down and escape the drama that is his past. So Skye hires him to work on her farm and when they are together they find these like viking jewelry pieces out in the woods and they start having these shared dreams where they see this other couple who is very much mirroring their situation just in a different time period. So the two romances are very much the same. They're very similar, but we're following them in two separate timelines. They don't cross. There's no time travel or anything like that. But both of them are very slow burn. I want to say at least 60% into this. It's also a very Eh, low steam sweet romance and I think it's one that if you like historical romance you would enjoy it if you like contemporary you would also enjoy it and then the last recommendation I have is my favorite series that I will throw into every single recommendation video I can if possible so I'm saving it for last because y'all probably sick and tired of me talking about it but that is the Wraith King series by Grace Draven the first two books Radiance and Idolin 
I had to look that up because I kept saying Eidolon. I still think it sounds better Eidolon, but it's pronounced Eidolon. I don't know. I'm just going to call it Eidolon because it sounds better. But it follows Brishan and Ildiko who are put into an arranged marriage for alliances within their kingdom. Brishan is a Kai warrior. He's got gray skin, glowing eyes, claws, and Ildiko is a human. They are not attracted to each other at all. They find each other's looks repulsive. But they are very mature. They enter into this arranged marriage and they agree to become friends. They agree to treat each other with respect and be honest with one another and talk things through. And through them getting to know one another, they end up finding that they grow attracted to one another and that turns into romance. And it's so good. This is another book that individually, they're very short books. But I was like, when is it going to happen? And it took like 70% of the way through it for it to finally happen. Now, the third book in this series is called The Ippos King, and it follows a completely different couple. It follows Saravek and Anaset. Saravek is a human. Anaset is a Kai warrior. And they have to go on this journey to take this uh, wounded prince back to his homeland for burial. And Anaset has to report back to Brish and some things that are going on within his new territory. And he is, he is gone for her immediately. Like, he, he's all in. He wants her. But she is the one that is causing their story to be a slow burn. <laughs> it was, again, so good. It tucked at my heart the way that they treated each other. Things that they talked about really just tugged at my emotions. And I loved it. This is my favorite series. Highly recommend checking out all three books. And I will throw it in anywhere I can. <laughs> so those were all of my recommendations for slow burn romances. Let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these or let me know what your favorite slow burn romance is. And once again, thank you to the lovely ladies who wanted to do a collab with me on this. Be sure to check out their channels and check out their videos linked down below in that playlist. And with that, thank you so much for watching, and until my next video, go read a slow burn romance. Bye!